Hello everyone and welcome. In this video we're going to be talking about whether or not directional rotors uh, can improve brake cooling. And as you can see I am a sweaty disgusting mess. Uh, that's because it's over 100 degrees in my garage and I've been working on my car all day. I used to be an engineer and I lived in a cubicle. Uh, you know I didn't have windows but I did have air conditioning. But it's way cooler to be in a garage uh, without windows and no air conditioning. So. In order to make myself still seem legitimate, I'm wearing these glasses. I feel like if I take them off, I kind of just look like I don't know how to play football, but I'm trying. So those are there for professionalism. Let's talk about uh, directional rotor. So what is a directional rotor? Basically what happens is you have veins in here which are curved. So they try and rotate and spin the air out uh, rather than just straight veins which you will have on stock vehicles. So why would they do uh, straight veins if directional is uh, you know, a better for cooling? Well it's because it's more expensive. So these are going to be directional. You can only put this rotor on this left side, the other rotor on the right side. Uh, some people will think this is on the wrong side because of these slots but in fact this is the correct side based on how the veins are oriented. Um, and so, you know, it's more expensive because you have to have two castings. So if you just have ones with straight veins, you can put it on either side. It's cheaper to make. That's why, you know, all the auto manufacturers uh, will use that as, you know, like the cheapest option if they choose to. So the other difference versus the stock rotors uh, is that this pulls air from the wheel side, so from the outside air, rather than from, you know, this heat shield side and pulling air in from, you know, your engine bay and suspension and stuff like that where you could have warm air uh, floating around in there. Make sure you bring in cool air uh, to go around it. So does it actually improve cooling? Well, I ran two different tests on really six different runs. Now the way that I actually measured the temperature on the brake discs themselves, I've got this uh, data logger here and so it has a magnetic uh, thermal probe on the end of it and I just attach that to the brake rotor, measure the temp, I can record it and then yeah, I look at that data in a spreadsheet. And so for the first test what I did is I started from a standstill, I recorded the temperature of the brake rotors front, uh, both the front left and the front right, uh, took the average of those accelerated to 60 miles per hour then came to a stop about 50 percent throttle 50 percent brakes uh, in this and then back on the accelerator another 60 miles per hour and then back on the brakes come to a complete stop and then measure the uh, rotor temp so up to 60 miles per hour stop up to 60 miles per hour stop measure the rotor temperature so on the stock rotors uh, they started out at an average of 41 degrees on the front and at the end of that first run they were at 137.3 degrees celsius versus uh, the aftermarket ones which we have here these are speed engineering uh, rotors and they started at 34 degrees and got up to an average of 150 degrees so as you can see they actually got hotter than the stock rotors Second test did that again, started with an average of 79 for the stock rotors, started with an average of 84.5 for the aftermarket, got up to 165 for the stock rotors, got up to 167 on the aftermarket rotors. So you see that the aftermarket ones started higher, the directional rotors started higher and they also ended higher. Um, and then finally, we get to our final test, uh, Average of 81 to start with the stock rotors, average of 85 for the aftermarket rotors, got up to 173 with the stock rotors, got up to 190 with the aftermarket rotors. So based on that testing, it seemed like these actually performed worse. Okay, so I decided to do another test. Uh, and this other test, I ran downhill. So I started at the top of this hill, measured the temperature of the brake rotors, accelerated up to 40 miles per hour, put it in neutral, and then just used the brakes to coast down and remain at 40 miles per hour. So only the brakes are being used, no engine braking. And then once I got to the stop point, I did this for three different uh, locations, three different starts and finishes. And once I got to that stop point, I stopped, pulled over, and then measured the temperature. So for the first test, started at 56 for the stock rotors, started at 43 for the aftermarket rotors, got up to 105 for the stock rotors, 102 for the aftermarket rotors. Now the aftermarket rotors started with a uh, lower temperature, so you know they, a little bit of an advantage there. Also for the ambient temperatures during this second testing, the first test ambient temperature was basically the same, 23 degrees Celsius versus 24 with the aftermarkets. This one there was a bit larger of a difference, 22 degrees Celsius 
for the stock rotors and about 26 degrees Celsius for the uh, aftermarket rotors ambient outside temperature while I was doing this testing. I tried to get it close uh, and, I, and I was successful for the morning but not so much in the afternoon. Not a huge difference though, a couple degrees. Ultimately when you get to these higher temperatures it's not gonna make a huge impact. Uh, so second, let's see, the test started at 61 and for the uh, aftermarket rotors started at 58.5, got up to 138. For the stock rotors got up to 141. So you can see there, and this was the longest one, this second run here, the aftermarket rotor started cooler and ended hotter than the stock rotors. Uh, not a huge difference, 0.72% hotter uh, at, in the end than the other ones. Um, so in order to calculate uh, the difference in percentage, you need to add 273 uh, to whatever the degree is in Celsius. So you have an absolute scale and then you can compare them directly. Okay, our final run started at 138 degrees for the stock rotors, 141 degrees for the aftermarket rotors, ended at 151.6 for the stock rotors, ended at 164.5 for the aftermarket rotors. So once again, it looks like all signs point to these perform worse than the stock rotors. That's disappointing. So, you know, I, I tried to kind of dig through the data and see, okay, is this really the case? And so uh, one of the things I did was started comparing uh, the, the actual percentage difference in the average starting temp versus, versus the average ending temp for those first 60 to zero tests. Um, and it turns out these were an average of 2.3 degrees hotter than the stock rotors. And then if you account for ambient temperatures, just 2% hotter. And then for the downhill tests, if you average those all up, that was another uh, difference of 2.3 degrees hotter, but if you count for ambient temperatures, because it was hotter outside for these, uh, it's really just a 1% difference uh, in how much hotter these were than the stock rotors. So, not a huge difference in the actual temperatures, um, and, I, and I was kind of curious, you know, there's a ton of variables even though all I did was change these rotors. The brake pads were the exact same, the rear rotors and pads were the exact same, everything was held constant on the car itself except for these rotors. I swapped out the rotors uh, from stock to these new ones. Now my first thought was, well maybe the tests that I conducted from 60 to zero, from 60 to zero were closer together uh, when I did the aftermarket ones, didn't give these enough time to cool down like I did for the first runs. That wasn't the case, there wasn't a big time difference. Um, I was actually really consistent in how long I had between tests for each uh, 60 to zero, 60 to zero run and it was the same little loop, so not a big difference. Uh, and then I thought, you know, it is possible if I were to slam the brakes harder uh, with these than I did with the stock rotors. That means more weight transfer to the front, more responsibility on these brakes. So you could have a, a minor difference there or actually a significant difference there depending on how hard you hit the brakes. Like, like I said, I gave it about 50%. Um, I think after doing this testing, I probably should have just slammed it and been more consistent. But you know, I, I feel somewhat confident in the brake testing itself. Okay, so it wasn't the time between tests um, and let's just assume that it wasn't because my braking was different. I did look at the cooling rate and these actually cooled, uh, even just sitting there um, when the car wasn't moving, they cooled at about three degrees for every 10 seconds versus the stock rotors were cooling about 2.4 degrees for every 10 seconds. And so then I thought, okay, well maybe there's a mass difference here and that's what's accounting for it. And in fact, these are about a pound lighter than the stock rotors. And I think that explains a lot of it. So, you know, they may have better cooling, but they're smaller. And so if you take uh, the same amount of energy and put it into one thing that has less mass and then put it into one thing that has more mass, the thing with less mass is going to be at a higher temperature uh, because you have more energy uh, in, a, in a higher density. And so that's what's happening here. What's interesting though, is these are 7.5% heavier and yet they're only uh, being outcooled by 1%. And so I thought, okay, well, what's interesting about my testing is that this is all being done with very low temperatures. I mean, we saw as high as 190 Celsius, but even still for brakes, that's not all that hot. Uh, if you're going on a track, you're gonna see significantly higher temperatures. And so, you know, 
what should be done, the best way to do this is a track comparison so that you get these really hot and the cooling efficiency when these are really hot is going to be more important than their mass because if that mass can't get rid of heat, it doesn't matter if it's big, uh, it's just going to get hotter and hotter and hotter versus if this can get rid of heat really well but doesn't have as much mass, it may be able to stay cooler on a track. So, Science of Speed actually tested these rotors on a track. They did 56 different laps and they had a little infrared uh, scanner that was reading the brake rotor temperature uh, during the entire lap. Uh, so really cool test that they did and they measured two different laps with stock versus these rotors. That was the only difference uh, between the two and they noticed that uh, the lap times were within half a mile per hour average. So the lap times were pretty consistent um, and they noticed that these remained 58.4 degrees Fahrenheit cooler or about 7.5% cooler on average for the entire duration of that lap. So even though they do have less mass, they have significantly better cooling design and as a result on the track uh, when Science of Speed was testing them, they were able to remain about 60 degrees Fahrenheit cooler uh, or about 7.4% cooler overall. They actually said that uh, looking at a plot of the temperature, these spent a lot more time in the 500 to 800 degree Fahrenheit range uh, in comparison to the stock rotors which spent a little bit more time in the 800 to 1000 degrees Fahrenheit range. Uh, so it is cool. I do think they're legitimate. My testing made it seem like uh, these are actually worse. I think the biggest reason is because I wasn't actually testing them very hard. Uh, I wasn't getting them up to super high temperatures where the cooling efficiency can shine rather than the mass because there is a mass difference and inherently if you put more energy into a smaller amount of mass it will be a, at a higher temperature. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments feel free to leave them below.